For people in the dark night of the soul, the Bible Psalm 42 is very important. It exactly describes the situation of someone in the dark night. And it even shows up advices how to go through it. Let's interpret Psalm 42, but first two minutes reading it. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for stream of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been full day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you. From the land of Jordan, the hates of Hermon from Mount Mitza. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By the day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My boons suffer mortal agony, as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why? so disturbed within me. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So let's interpret the Psalm 42, but from the perspective of the dark night of the soul. The first two verses are about being thirsty, but not after normal water, but instead after God. First, he compares himself with an animal, and in the second verse, the outdoor directly says that he's thirsty after God. He wants to meet him. That means he doesn't meet him right now. That means he has lost the connection. But he already knows the connection. Otherwise, he would not be so thirsty after God. He would not be addicted after God. This person must be a spiritual person already. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. A normal person who is not interested in divine things and in God is, of course, not writing such verses. So this person must be a very spiritual person which already had the connection with God, the inner connection, the connectedness, the contemplatio, insights of enlightenment already, maybe out-of-body experiences or just very much bliss. And, of course, inner peace. And suddenly this person must have lost all of these gifts from the heaven. That's why he's longing so much after God. And this exactly describes a person in the dark night of the soul. Because also there, suddenly you feel having a shadow or a cloud in your head. As suddenly everything becomes dark and dusty and cloudy and you don't have any connection anymore. But even worse than the normal people which are not longing and not interested in God. And suddenly, or even for a longer period, here it appears, here it appears already that this person has a throwback since a long time. Because when he's already thirsty, so that must be a very long time of having no spiritual water and the, and don't think it in the physical way it's not about holy water here which you can get in every church so this person could just run to a church or whatever was there in that time a temple and could take this holy water but that was not about the physical water he's thirsty after the spiritual drink from which the mystical rumi also talks these things you can find in every religion actually about the enlightenment 
it's not that you can only say in the Hinduism and in the Buddhism and the Eastern, also the Western religion is about the enlightenment. Jesus was an enlightenment. And when he says follow him, people have to follow the enlightenment way, not only to copy the good deeds on the surface, but there are extra videos about it. Let's focus the dark night. There is another aspect here. In the second verse, there is this word living here. This, again, you can find in many places in the Bible. And also it is talked about living people, which means people who are living with God, which also means people who are not living with God are dead already. It's not, they are not talking here about the future. They are talking about the present. And they say that people who are following God are lively, are living, are alive. Because they feel, of course, they feel more alive, connected and so on. And the other people who are only after the phones and cars and all that stuff, they are not so lively. Even they appear more lively because they are nervous. Actually, they are only nervous and overstimulated. But they are not really living. They are dead, actually. They are just shaking with their nerve cells, but nothing more than that. Let's go to the third verse. This one is a short one. It only says that this person is sad. The person is whining, is crying. And the only thing which is a little bit exaggerated is that he's saying that his tears have been my food. So maybe that also describes that he is not willed and not interested in food anymore, which is only underlining that the sadness is so big that there is no other interest. Sadness is so much because of the loss of the connection to God that all other things are not. Interested. This is also actually a sign of the dark night of the soul, that you lose interest in all the rest, even in eating and all these things. And the second part actually is maybe a playing which directs to the situation of Jesus, because the same thing they also said to him when he was on the cross. Where is now your God? When you can make oneness, why don't you help yourself? So that's, but that's a normal interpretation. This has nothing to do with the dark night of the soul. Let's come to the fourth verse. Here again, the person underpins just that he has lost the connection. He explains it in a sad way that may, maybe here the author tries to pull the people in his emotions by saying, and remembering, oh, when I think of the past, there were these good times with God and now everything is gone. Let's come to the fifth one. Now it is clear he's talking with his own soul. He's doing self-talk. In the previous verses, it was not clear if he's talking to the reader or he's talking with himself. But now it's clear he's talking to his own soul, asking himself why he's so down. And why he doesn't call. Here are now three interesting aspects. The first thing is the hope. John of the Cross, the famous medieval mystical, also said that hope is very important in the dark night of the soul. Normally, before I was going a spiritual path, before I knew all of these things, and before I had these happenings with the connectedness, I could never think about hope. Of Hope was a word for me which is kind of weak hope is only hope hope is how could i say hope is not profound enough to give me enough trust it's just hope it's not trust but in this dark night when you have lost all your abilities your spiritual abilities and all your spiritual connection and you are absolutely dumb feeling dumb you are not silly or so but everything went not the normal thinking is not working and the meditation is not working and nothing is working. It's the worst depression one can have. And there is only one hope, of course, and that's the point in the life when hope of God is really important. The next thing is thankfulness. This person is looking forward. He said he will yet praise him again. Or he will yet praise. That means he will praise him. He's looking forward to praise him again in the future because he already praised him as the previous verse said, but now he can't because he's not feeling as if God is there. 
he's lacking this connection. So to what or to whom should he praise? He's not feeling to, to be thankful like that. But thankfulness is very important. Still, you can have a ritual. You can praise God even if you don't feel the connection. Just praise him as the normal churchgoers do. They are not knowing about God. They are also distracted from God. But still, they have their rituals going in the temple, going in the church. And that's also good to now behave like them. Not absolutely behave like them. You are still The hundreds sheep from the parable Jesus told. The hundreds sheep. There are 99 sheep which are good and fine, but there's one sheep who ran away. But this sheep, God will love the most. And this sheep, you are, you are the black sheep among all the white sheep, which believe they are all better. Because someone in the dark night is really close to the enlightenment, really close to really see God to really get in the absolute union. And that's why the one sheep, which is different than all the others, it is said that's for God, from God's view, the best one. But of course, black sheep, not in a bad way. Of course, he meant in a good way. It's a paradox. There are many paradoxes on the way to the enlightenment. He also is saying, my savior and my God, I have written that because in the German translation, which I have here, it is different a little bit. It's said, God will help me. You can see it when it's, he says, my savior, he's still trusting in God. The main core here is the trust. Still, there is trust. And also, people in the dark night are very close to lose the trust. But in what else we could trust? Because we have lost already everything. We had all the spiritual world and all these cool things, which are wonders, which are not to explain with the logical mind. And suddenly we have even lost this. First we have lost the interest in the material world. Now we have lost the spiritual world. Now we are sitting there in lethargy, not knowing this word, not knowing that word, and there is nothing. But still this person here is waiting for a redeemer, for someone, for God, for someone who comes and helps him in this situation. And that's why I want to say trust is here. Very important. Let's go to the sixth verse. Sixth verse only repeats what was already said and is kind of a location description. Maybe for the historical part interesting. But for us in the dark night, let's look on number seven, which is about a very heavy waterfall. In my translation, it's coming from a mountain and it's wild. It's coming very heavy even destroying things, throwing stones with it. And in my translation, it is said, the flood pulls him with it. So he is swept over me. It's kind of same. But the thing is, the water. When you go into enlightenment, you give up to be a drop and you become the whole ocean. This is also the water pulls you. And also in the Bible again and again, God's folk was in situations where much water came and flood everything and only a few stood alive. And so when the water comes, this is also a sign that the enlightenment is very close. But before the enlightenment comes, first we have to go through hell before we come to the heaven. And here it appears the hell, the, which is in form of water, is pulling him to the right direction. Now it's coming that maybe he is already through his dark phase, which he had until the sixth verse, that he now has the hope already because he's feeling water for this actually negative. But he's not appearing nervous or this verse doesn't appear as if he's He doesn't, it's a very heavy waterfall, but it's not as he would suffer so much from it. Normal people would be very nervous and excited, but here he only describes what happens, but it's not that he's annoyed about that. And yes, in verse 8 already, it appears that this person is feeling God's love again, or almost. He said that the love is directed to him already. And that night, God's song is with him. 
maybe this person is singing and feeling from the inside that God is there and singing because of he's happy now because already he's feeling that spiritual energy inside. Maybe not fully enlightened it, but he's already aware that God's presence is there and has the connection back. The last line, a prayer to the God of my life, is in my translation and in other translations, it's said that God gives him his life back. God gives me my life back. But also is to remember we had talked about life and that the Bible in many places say that you are only alive when you are with God. So when he says that he has his life back or prayer to the God of my his life, so he feels now living lively because he feels the love from God, from you. He overcame his throw back, his throw out of the meditation. Now he's connected again. The ninth verse, God as a rock, okay, he protects and he's strong. But again, he's crying and shouting, why have you forgotten me? Because he's not fully alive. He feels a little bit love, as said in the eighth verse. But now he's still not full in the connectedness. He's still lacking the spiritual connection, which he had earlier. He's not fully enlightened. And so he's asking why he's falling out and why he's oppressed by the enemy. That means not always and not in every case there must be humans to have enemies. It can also be that he means demons, bad spirits, or means projections of his own mind. Thoughts which arise from the unconscious. When he's a spiritual person, he's very open also to the unconscious, not only to the heaven, but also to the depths of the soul. And it can happen that there are thoughts who are blaming him. That must not always be other people. And this, he can also say enemies, but the enemies, the spiritual enemies. But which can also be people, as people would normally interpret the Bible, then they would say bad people came to him. But actually you can also see that are only thoughts, negative thoughts, spirits. Let's come to the last verse, which is 10, because 11 is just a repetition of an earlier verse we have already talked about. In the 10th verse, again, he's claiming that he's suffering. But so much, it's even a mortal agony. It can happen in the dark night of the soul that the negative thoughts, they are even heavier than normal people with their negative thoughts in everyday life. John of the Cross also says that anxiety can be much bigger and can be very often there in the dark night of the soul. And when it is a mix with the own thoughts who are blaming where is your God or blaming about anything about God or blaming on you that you are a bad for, for me, for example, my thoughts always say me that I am a bad person. Not like the normal people. They say me even when I'm in a very lethargic dark night mood. They say me even that I'm the worst person. Wherever I am, in which group I am, in which work I am, I'm always the worst employee. I'm always the worst group member. I'm always, and when I'm alone, I'm the worst person of the whole world. This my thoughts always wanted to tell me. And everyone has his thoughts and they are even heavier in the dark night. So heavy that my bones suffer mortal agony, that even he feels it physically. Actually, it's only a mental attack. It's only a spiritual problem, but he, it is so heavy that he describes it, even feeling it in the bones. And then, of course, the 11th, this self-talk again. Also with the repetition, it was verse 5, which was the same. And here are finally, again, remember these three important things, which is hope thankfulness indirectly, and trust. I would say these are one of the most important things we should keep in the dark night of the soul. From this first, of course, there are other things, but these are very basic ones. And that's why this Psalm 42 is so important. And that's why I wanted to interpret it with you and for you. If you have something to add, maybe there's one word I have not interpreted or I have not commented on, which may be interesting for you 
Let us know down below in the comments. See you then. Bye.